They thought it was, first of all, interesting that the prime minister finally gave an interview to an Israeli channel. So far, it's been uh, the realm of international media. So that, that's important to note. But what did he say on our... As you said, Jamal, it's quite a curious choice for him to wait for nine months to give an interview to a national media outlet. That's a lot about uh, the interview itself. And I think the highlights of the interview does a great job in explaining possible reasoning behind that. As you said, the main highlight of the interview that Netanyahu gave yesterday was the fact that he said major operations in Gaza will come to end very soon. Now, to put things into context, he was answering a question direct question about whether or not the fighting would uh, come to an end in a month, which is something that is really a question that the Israeli public has been uh, busy discussing uh, some time now. And his response seemed to be, in a way, non-committal, maybe, but didn't go too far off uh, from that mark either. And he said, very soon, it will be, it will be over. Uh, another highlight of the interview, um, as you said, uh, was the fact that, uh, was the fact that he, for the first time, rejected uh, the kind of ceasefire deal backed by the U.S. that would bring the Gaza fight into a complete end. But if the major operations will end in a month or so, uh, frankly, that question probably isn't that interesting anymore. But we can come back to that later and uh, talk about what this might mean uh, in terms of the rift between uh, the U.S. and Israel. But, yeah, the main, the main highlight was the fact that he talked about major operations and whether or not they will come to an end very soon. And has a lot of implications for uh, the wider Middle East because the end of major operations will obviously mean more resources being allocated to the north of the country, uh, to the border with Syria, where Hezbollah yeah. uh, and Israel have been uh, engaged in deadly yeah. skirmishes since the war began. Honor, I do want to pick up on those comments because it is uh, very significant. And the fact that he said that the next step for the military would be for Israel to redeploy some forces to the north, where, as we know, tensions have been increasing with Hezbollah. What are the latest developments over there from the weekend? So let's go through this step by step. As you said, what does the new phase in the Gaza war might mean? That means uh, withdrawal of some Israeli forces, uh, leaving, uh, paved, paving the way to uh, special operations into Gaza uh, and out, which might be good news for Gaza on its own. It could definitely result in more resources being allocated to the north, uh, to the border with uh, uh, Syria, to the border with Lebanon, uh, where Hezbollah is located. And that will definitely result in increasing likelihood of a full-blown war with the Iran-backed militant group, which will, which will most likely be uh, more deadly and possibly prolonged and wider in scope than anything else we have seen so far. And why is that so important uh, for the wider region? Unlike Hamas, uh, Hezbollah is in fact a, a militant group that is, unlike any other group in the, in the region, uh, has tens of thousands of fighters, has hundreds of thousands of missiles and rockets in its, uh, in its arsenal, believed to be so. And just over the past five days, both Hezbollah and other Iran-backed groups in the region have said openly that tens, if not tens of thousands of members of different militia backed by Iran in the region would join Hezbollah in the event of an open war between Israel, Israel and Hezbollah, which would increase the stakes dramatically uh, in case of such a war. 